Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable stenciled bags that you can use to put treats in for your teachers or just any kind of, you can really use it for any kind of bag. Um, birthday gifts, anniversaries, um, housewarming because I have a friend who I'm going to be doing that for. And what we've done here is we've just recently gone and gone apple picking. And so we have some cute little mixes and apple butters and I'm going to actually put apples in it as well. And so I thought what I would do with this one is do a fall um, themed stenciling project on these cute little craft bags. And these are just kind of a country theme because that's what we're um, going with with the apples. But you could really tailor it to any um, theme that you're going with. They have multiple colors and things like that so you could really just do anything with it. What we're going to do first is just I'm just going to show you all the things that we've started with. So we just have our simple craft bag here. These were all purchased at Michael's or any craft store that you have in your area. We also um, purchased a full stencil set because I wasn't really sure what size we were going to need so we just got the whole thing. And there's multiple ones. They're, these are rounded on the top so I'm not really sure what you do with that but the ones that I used are flat. And then we have our stencil sheet, which we happen to choose leaves because we're going with the fall theme. And um, it came in a big sheet all in one. And what I've done is I've cut it to fit my size bag. And then I'm just going to position them with tape, um, which we have here. This is painter's tape. It's easy to, easy to peel off and things like that. They actually sell stencil tape, so um, I think that might work too, obviously. And we just have acrylic paint. We bought an assortment because we are not using a large amount. Um, if there was something that you needed a bigger area to cover, you would probably want to buy the um, bigger bottles of that. So what we have here is gonna, and we actually ended up mixing some of the colors because we needed muted shades and things like that. So to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, position our stencils where we want them which I've sort of done here already, but <clears throat> I haven't taped them down yet. And I'm going to just tape them down with this blue painter's tape, or whatever you know tape you have that's gonna let you allow you to peel it off so that it's um, not gonna damage your damage whatever you're trying to stencil on. You can do this on fabric. You can do this on plastic, you can do it on your wall, you can do it basically anywhere, but this is an idea that I had to um, actually give as like a little back to school present for our, t for our girls teachers because I think they do such a good job and it's nice to share you know things with them and um, we have a bunch of apples that we're going to be sharing so I thought this would be fun. So now I'm ready to start the project. I have all my stencils taped down and I'm going to be starting at the top and moving down because you want to um, you want to do that because you don't want your hand or your arm getting into areas that you've already stenciled. So the first color that I'm going to go with is the green on this one here. So I'm just adding the green on the brush and I'm just going to tap it off because you want to make it a very dry application. So you just want to start, you want to hold it taut so that it doesn't move around a lot. And this really, you can do this, you know, it doesn't have to, you don't have to cover it completely. Um, this bag is brown, so it would go with the leaf theme and the fact that it would give you some dimension. Um, this one is gonna be, I'm gonna probably do two colors on this one. You just wanna tap up and down gently so that you don't bleed under your stencil. That's the key to creating stencils that look, they have the sharp outlines. So I've finished the, the first base color and I'm just gonna add a little bit of an accent color. And to, for this one, I'm gonna choose, I'm choosing the golden, the deep golden. And again, you're just going to apply it, you know, randomly over the, over the pattern. This is going to add texture as well as color. And you know when you look at leaves, whether they're fall leaves or you know any time of year, they're not just one color. Now I'm going to add a vein, um, an accent down the vein of the 
the leaf to give it some um, basically highlighting. So I've just mixed the darker green and the lighter green together to make a lighter green. And I'm just going to go down the center where the veining occurs naturally in the leaf. Okay, so now that one's basically finished. So now I'm going to go to one of the smaller leaves and I'm going to do this one in the um, orange and brown and gold. So I'm going to take a smaller brush because this is a smaller leaf so you don't need to cover as much area, you don't need as much paint. And this is the color that I'm using. It's a really pretty color. I don't know if it shows up like that but it's a really bright um, orange. And so I need a little bit more of this. This paint dries quickly so you need to just use small amounts when you're going. And again I'm just going to get paint on the brush. You want to dab it off so that it's not too much to start with. And you're just going to, you can turn turn it so that it, that you can really position it really however you want it, but um, I'm going to just start and go around again, just like I did with the other leaf. You just want to go up and down. Hold your holding your brush straight up and down, that is the key to getting your lines to come out right. And I'm going to move on to yellow or dark gold. I'm going to go back to this gold. And I'm just going to go just go over the areas that I didn't get covered. I've always wondered what color to cover to cover the stem because you know you never I guess the stems aren't green anymore once the leaves fall off so I just color them the color that they are that I'm going with this so this is going to look really great when it's finished you always want to remember when you're stenciling that you want to add dimension you don't want to have anything just be one solid flat color because that is what makes it look like it's a stencil. It doesn't look real. You want to make sure that you add layering of colors. And I'm going to add some more brown. Give it a quick stir. Just a little glop. We're gonna... That's a little tiny brush. And just going to go um, probably up the stem, maybe up the center. And another tip is that you can add water to your paint, and that will also um, give it more of a, of course, watercolor look, obviously. And it creates more of an airy light effect. Just gonna go kind of all over it. Just you know, there's really no wrong way to do it. Leaves have spots on them, so. Now I just need to finish up these last ones, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So now I have completed all the stencils. I've created the colors that I want and the combinations, and now I'm gonna just peel the tape. I've removed all the tape and the stencils, and this is our finished product of what we have created. You see there's a nice little leaf pattern here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to create my bow. And this was purchased at Michael's as well. This is wired ribbon. And I just have the gingham checkerboard pattern to go with my apple theme. You could of course choose any theme. Um, they have thinner ribbon. And I'm just going to loop. I'm just going to make about um, one, two, six loops. I'm just going to loop, loop it up, and I've just got the, the piece here. I'm going to hold it with my thumb. See, I've got three on this side, three over here, and then I'm just going to cut this piece. And I'm just going to pinch it in the middle a little bit to just keep it in place. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the tail which is the piece that's going to come down and create the little end pieces that hang down.
which is also going to secure the center of this. You're just going to bring it around and just basically tie a knot. Then what you can do also on the ends is you can clip this. Um, you can clip these on an angle to give it more of like a finished look. And these ends will fray so you have to be careful with how you're cutting it. But, and that's what it looks like, the bow. And then you can just tuck the little corners down. Actually you can use this to attach it to, you can use the little end pieces to attach it to the corner of your bag or you can just tuck these away and um, tape it or staple it even on there. And then you want to just, you know, make these fuller so that they stand out. And you have a cute little bow to attach. Just like we've done over here, we have our apple mix or our cinnamon pancake mix, our apple butter. And I've attached the bow on the side with a little tissue paper and here's our finished product. We have the bag, the finished product, all assembled. And I think it turned out very well. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope it really inspires you to get out there and craft with your kids or with your friends. It would be a great activity to do with girlfriends. And it's really simple and you can um, just tailor it to whatever you need. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.